Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. Um, I'm your host David Tear, and as you can probably see, I'm still on vacation. I'm going to be here in Utah with my friends for the next uh, few days, but I'm still making my videos. And today I'm going to talk about this is the last rule I'm going to talk about for numerical integration. It's called Simpson's rule, and it's a very precise rule. It's one of the best uh, known rules for numerical integration. And the way it works is, I mean, if you look at this picture, what you're doing is this is the simplest case. This is just uh, n equals 2, um, two intervals, as you can see. And what you do is uh, you always have to have an even number of inter intervals. And then what you do is you take for, for every two uh, consecutive intervals, you take um, the, um, the values of f of x on the endpoints. You also take the value of f of x in the middle. And it turns out that for any three points in a plane, um, you can always uh, find a parabola that passes through those three points. So that's what you do. You replace the function with a parabola that passes through the same three points. And it turns out that this gives you a very accurate estimate of the integral. And if you want to get more accurate, you can do more than two points. You can do any even number of points. You just take it every two um, consecutive um, uh, sub-intervals and, and put the uh, parabola that, that um, fits those three points. Um, and if you do that, you get a nice formula. And here's the formulas for n equals 2. The formula for n equals 2 is pretty simple. You just... Um, take, uh, you know, b minus a over 3. It turns out you always want to, or by 6. Uh, and then what you do inside, you take f of a, um, and f of b, those are the endpoints, and then it turns out that you have to multiply the midpoint by 4. So you take 4 f of a plus b over 2. That's just the midpoint. And, um, you know, if you like, you take, you can write one third h. h is just uh, the uh, width of the interval. So then, um, but how would you generalize this? Well, you generalize it just by kind of um, um, the the thing the the thing you always multiply by is one third h, where h is the width of the interval. Uh, and if you like, that's b minus a over three n, where n is the number of interval, intervals. And then the thing that goes inside has a pattern to a nice pattern. Um, you take uh, f of a, that's your first term inside, then you take four times or f of x0, you can write x0 equals a, and then you can take 4 times f of x1, 2 times f of x2, 4 times f of x3, so on. Just alternate the 4s and 2s till you get to the last one, which is this f of x n, or if you like, f of b. So that's how you do it. And, uh, you know, it's not really all that much more complicated than the midpoint rule. I mean, the coefficient's a little more complicated, but it's just as easy to apply. If you want to write a computer program to do this, it's really no more work than doing the midpoint rule. But it gives you a much more accurate estimate in general. And I'm just going to do a couple examples here. So I'm going to do the same two examples I gave last time when I was talking about the mid uh, or the trapezoid rule. Um, so let's first look at the integral of x squared going from 0 to 1. And I've done this three times already. I think you guys know by now the... Uh, the um, exact um, value of this integral is one third. Well, let's apply Simpson's rule to see what we get. Well, I'm not going to bore you with all the details. I wrote out the formula and I did all the calculations here. You can work them out yourself. If you do the calculation, you'll find you do get the, the exact answer, one third. And this isn't really a coincidence. I mean, Simpson's rule, I mean, this shouldn't surprise you because the function that we're integrating here is a parabola and we're we're uh, um, approximating every subintervals by parabolas, and in this case, since we're starting with a parabola, you're just going to get the same parabola. So it's not really a surprise that you get the same answer, just like you get the right answer for a linear function with the midpoint rule, the trapezoid rule. Uh, and it, it turns out that Simpson's rule doesn't just work for for uh, quadratic uh, polynomials; it also works for cubic polynomials. Um, it doesn't fit the cubics, but it, you know, I guess uh, all the errors uh, cancel out for cubics. So it is a really nice rule. It gives you the exact answer for every polynomial up to degree 3. And it does really good even for other functions. Here's the other example I went over last time. Integral of square root of 1 minus x squared, x going from 0 to 1. And like I mentioned in the last video, this is a quarter of a unit circle, so we know what the right answer should be. It should be pi over 4. 
Well, let's see what Simpson's rule gives us for this example. If you plug everything in, you get kind of a mess. So I'm not going to go through all the steps, but you can do it yourself. If you work this uh, um, sum out, the answer you get, and I rounded it to five decimal places here, you get 0 0.78175. And it turns out that that's a very good approximation. It's only off by about a half a percent from the true value, which uh, you know, pi over 4, which is approximately 0 0.7540. So it does really well for this uh, quarter circle. As a matter of fact, it does, it does a lot better than the trapezoid rule, which was the rule we used last time. So anyway, it is a good rule. And like I said, this is the last rule I'm going to talk about for numerical integration. In the next uh, several videos, I'm going to talk about analytic integration, which is really just applying uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus using the fact that integration is the opposite of differentiation. That'll allow us to compute some exact values of some very important integrals. Um, anyway, we'll do that next time. So thank you for watching. Um, long live math, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.